So, very, very, very interesting news. Iran and Venezuela have signed a 20-year cooperation plan during Maduro's visit. So, Maduro uh, is uh, in Tehran, right? He, he uh, just arrived today. There he is with, the, um, with Ali Khamenei. And uh, this is huge news, right? It's absolutely huge news because the Iranians and, and Venezuela, they already have a close partnership. But this is signaling again that they're going to increase that. It, they also had uh, something about the oil swap last year, right? And they didn't, ex they didn't uh, spill the beans on, uh, you know, the full details on the uh, agreement. But it's mostly economic stuff. And I just wanted to show this to you because... It's really good for the global south, for the Middle East, for the uh, resistance access to see things like this, okay? Uh, last year, Iran signed a 25-year partnership with China, basically integrating um, Iran into the Belt and Road Initiative, the, or the New Silk Road, as it's also known. And by the way, Cuba and Syria also uh, followed suit. That's very good. It's very good because you have all these countries... Um, kind of, you know, breaking away from the maximum pressure campaign, which was launched by Trump and Pompeo, and is really still in place under Biden, where they have put all these sanctions on, on all the, you know, quote-unquote evil countries, right? Um, they just basically make people starve in Venezuela, they make people starve in Syria, make people, you know, uh, uh, suffer in Iran, they can't find um, uh, certain medicines. There's so many aspects of sanctions that ruin people's lives. And it's always civilians that are being um, hurt the most, that are, being, that are being affected the most by sanctions. They tell you, oh, it's, it's sanctions on Maduro. No, it's sanctions on Venezuelans. Get that straight. And always remember, sanctions are economic warfare. So, you know, really what's happened, instead of these countries collapsing under maximum pressure, <laughs> they've circumvented the sanctions. And again, I don't say that lightly. It doesn't mean they, did, they didn't suffer. They did. But nevertheless, the, the long-term objective of the Americans to break these countries has not worked. It's not working. This is another proof of that. Here's Maduro with uh, Raisi, who's the uh, Iranian prime, uh, president that was elected last year. And um, they, actually, <laughs> they actually talked about maximum pressure. Yeah. So here they mentioned the nuclear deal. But again, that's, that's uh, not related uh, uh, to this uh, thing right now. One development, they will have direct flights. You will have direct flights between Tehran, the Iranian capital, and Caracas, Venezuela's capital. Maduro praised Venezuela's resistance against sanctions and imperialism since 2017 and said his country aims to use Iran's experiences in this area and will center future cooperation on science and technology. And uh, he also praised Iran's miracles in developing its agriculture sector amid historic droughts and said the two countries aim to develop ties in this sector. So again, you know, despite the sanctions, you have to give credit to the Iranians because I would say among all the sanctioned countries, they've probably done the best. Um, and I would put Cuba as, as a close second because, the, like I said, the sanctions really destroy everything. Uh, and when, when you cannot function properly, all the sectors collapse, agriculture, industry, and services. So it's a big challenge to, you know, to recover from that. Iran, one of its biggest exports and sources of revenue is oil. After the sanctions, they, they had to decrease their oil output by half. They have 100 million barrels in storage. So that means less money, less money to use on social projects, on infrastructure, and so on. So you have countries like China that have come in, countries like Venezuela that have come in, and said, you know what, screw the sanctions. We want to work together. We want to buy your oil, and we'll give you this in exchange. And... They've used those resources wisely to improve the country. Iran, for example, is fourth in the world in, in nanotechnology. Iran's defense capabilities are quite extraordinary. They have cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, to the point that Israel is afraid of them, to the point that Trump left the nuclear deal, uh, with the Israelis telling him to, of course, because the nuclear deal didn't cap Iran's ballistic missile program, which you might be wondering, well, why? They don't have, those two things are different. Yeah, they are. But... They know there's no nuclear program. It's about capping Iran's defenses. And so that tells you that they're very capable, despite the sanctions. And Iran, as you can see with agriculture, has made lots of strides. It's, you know, no one's saying these countries are perfect. They're far from perfect. But you can't say that they've done nothing and that they haven't found ingenious ways 
to work with the sanctions despite the suffering. You can't ignore that because it's it's an insult to the work of many, many people. You know, Syria, unfortunately, is not not only under sanctions, but at war, right? So it's it's been crippled in in both those ways. But these countries are sticking together now. You're seeing more more and more cooperation between them. Sometimes it's easy to look at this and say, well, yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just talk. Oh yeah, we love each other. We are gonna resist imperialism. It's not, it's not only talk, this is action. There's real action going on. Another thing that I would point you to is, um, well, I'll, I'll address that in a moment. Here, take a look at them signing this document. This is, um, there you have Raisi and Maduro signing the 20 year cooperation document in Tehran Ter as a roadmap for expansion of ties. بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم سند نقش راه 20 ساله توسعه همکاری فیما بین جمهوری اسلامی ایران و جمهوری بولیواری ونزوئلا توسط وزرای محترم امور خارجه دو کشور جناب آقای امیر عبداللهیان از طرف دولت جمهوری اسلامی ایران و جناب آقای کارلوس فاریا I wanted to look at the Washington Post with you guys, so <laughs> look at their, their, their take. They basically said that um, uh, uh, Venezuela was an a energy-hungry nation, right? So they don't tell you why, though, right? They, they, they don't tell you that uh, the U.S. Re really crippled um, the infrastructure in, in Venezuela. Venezuela has so much oil, but it can't refine it can't export it because of sanctions. So, you know, they, they screw these countries, and then when they try helping each other, Iran and Venezuela helping each other, they still, they still trample on them. You know, the, the Bank of England in London stole um, Venezuela's gold, a billion, billion dollars worth of gold, because they saw, oh, oh, look, Maduro is paying the Iranians for fuel in gold. Well, let's take away his gold so he can't buy any more fuel. And then the Americans said, oh, well, the Iranians are sending fuel. Let's take the fuel. We will seize the ships and sell them. And that's what we saw just in the last days, right? The, um, the tankers being seized. I have some updates on that, by the way. We'll get to them in a second. This is a simple issue that the Americans could solve any minute. It has nothing to do with, with Venezuela. Even if Iran had signed the nuclear deal uh, and everything is fine, Venezuela and Iran would still cooperate. They're trying to portray it, in my opinion, they're trying to portray it like, oh, Iran is, is, is trying to, you know, Increase ties with Venezuela because the nuclear deal is not looking so good. No, rubbish. Complete rubbish. So they're going to expand ties in the oil and petrochemical industries, the military and the economy. That's what I figured. It's sort of a general thing. No, nothing surprising there. Really nothing surprising. But the, the, I still wanted to look at it briefly with you guys. Um, you know, as something, uh, uh, something quite, quite good for those countries. Maduro is on a Eurasia tour after President Joe Biden declined uh, to invite him to the Summit of the Americas, which began on Thursday. His stops earlier this week include Algeria and Turkey. Turkey is one of a handful of places around the world, Russia and Iran among them, where Maduro is welcome amid U.S. sanctions um, and on his country. But, by the way, side note, so, same for Russians in Turkey, right? Uh... Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua were not invited to the summit by the Biden administration due to their authoritarianism and human rights violations. That decision led to Mexico's president announcing he would not attend. We looked at that. Yeah, we looked at that. I mean, this is... What am I supposed to say? This is, this is ridiculous, right? It's a joke. They, they have a mouth, you know, they, they have the nerve to talk about... <laughs> they have a mouth. I started using the Syrian expression. <laughs> they, they have the nerve to talk about authoritarianism and human rights violations. Anyway, Raisi praised Maduro as a leader who has shown a policy of fighting against imperialism and achieved a good position by overcoming sanctions and threats. Well, you know, the Iranians, the Iranians have respect. They respect themselves, they respect others, they respect Venezuela, and that's why they invited the real president, Maduro, and not some puppet named Guaido. <laughs> okay? Of course. Why wouldn't they? Of course. And... I don't know. Again, wh look why they're squeezing the nuclear deal in here. Why are they talking about the cameras being removed? I don't understand what this is, what this got to do with, with the, the visit. But okay. I made a separate video about the nuclear deal. Really, let me just say this again. When you talk about the Iran nuclear deal, the coverage 
the reporting in the mainstream media is so bad. I mean, it's it's really one of the worst topics like that you could possibly go to read about. The worst. So bad. Really, really, really bad. It, it, it's saturated, completely saturated with pro-Western nonsense. So don't, don't read anything from the mainstream media about this topic. I beg you. Do yourself a favor. Seriously. Um, don't, take, like, don't take my word for it. Just go read the nuclear deal yourself. Okay? Look at what's happening and compare that to how they report it. And again, I have a whole playlist showing everything that's happened uh, on the ground. And you will see it's like two, two completely different worlds. Anyway, anyway, just quick, quick video about this. And uh, I hope uh, to see you know, more of this because this is the shift to a multipolar world that we've been talking about, right? So many things are going on right now. So many things. Um, and we, we talked about all these oil sales, energy sales, gas sales uh, in being denominated in currencies other than the US dollar. We talked about all these countries that refuse to sanction Russia that have actually preferred to just continue trading, continue their ties, their bilateral ties with Russia. So once again, you have to understand that the world is not just the West. <laughs> There's a, a, literally an entire world outside, okay? When they talk about the international community, let's really talk about the international community, not just Western countries. And you will see that a lot of things are changing right now. A lot of things are speeding up. China's Belt and Road, this is, you know, this is going in, in, in parallel. The Great Eura Greater Eurasia Project, all of this, it's tiny, tiny pieces adding up to shift away. And no one can know for sure what that world is going to be like, this multipolar world. I don't know if it's going to be better. I don't know if it's going to be worse. This, this world, though, this, this system that we have, this political system, uh, you know, this uh, NATO brutality, Half the Middle East on fire. The, the sanctions. This cannot. This cannot go on. This cannot go on. We we can't. We can't tolerate this.